So we saw that we can use a for of loop with an object as long as we also use object.keys or object.values in conjunction with it. There's also another type of loop called a for in loop, which we'll talk about in this video. The very last loop we have to cover. If you have not seen Amadeus yet, ah, oh, fantastic movie. I forgot about how great that movie is. There's a reason it's the only 10 on the list. Okay, so for in syntactically is very similar to for of. We have for, parens, variable, in an object instead of of an array or an iterable. The main difference is that a for of will iterate over the actual values in an array or an iterable, in a string, each character, in an array, each value. A for in will loop over the keys, the properties in an object. So here's an example object, Jeopardy winnings. This represents Ken Jennings, if you are familiar with him, I think he's the all-time winningest Jeopardy contestant. Uh, it's how he made all of his earnings or his money from Jeopardy, it came in different pieces. His long stretch of gameplay was two and a half million. He participated in this IBM Watson challenge where he played Jeopardy against a supercomputer. He got 300,000, 500,000 for a tournament of champions. It doesn't really matter. If you don't watch Jeopardy, then you must be bored at this point. So we'll move on. So let's try using a for in, for, and then we make a variable, for let, and then we could just call it property in Jeopardy winnings. We'll console.log prop. Prop's not a great name, but sometimes it's tricky to, to figure out what to name that variable because in this case, it's kind of easy. We have very similar data, but if we had a user object where we had username and then we had age, we had email, what would be a good variable name that would make sense to hold any of these property names? Prop is going to be good enough for now. You'll see people do key or K. I'll go with prop. Let's console.log prop and you can see what we get, the four keys. So it's very similar to what we did with four of where we had object.keys, but we don't have to do that. This will loop over the keys automatically as long as we have in instead of of. I change that to of, we get an error. It's not iterable. For of wants an iterable. For in wants an object. And that's what we get. So if I wanted to print out also the value, I would do console.log jeopardy winnings of prop with square brackets. And there we go. If I wanted to sum them all together to figure out his total earnings, I'll just duplicate this loop. For prop in Jeopardy winnings, I'll make a variable to store the total, let total equal zero. And then each time through, I'll just add Jeopardy winnings of prop to total. Jeopardy winnings of prop is going to be one of these numbers. So we still loop over the keys. That's the only option we have with a for in. It's going to loop over the properties, the key names, and then we use that to access the value, to get that value out. Just like a dictionary, as we saw earlier in the object section. We have a word, we look it up in the dictionary to get the corresponding definition. So if I print out total at the end, let's do a template literal. Ken Jennings, total earnings and then dollar sign curly braces total 3.4 million dollars there we go so that's for in one thing that i do want to point out is that technically you can use for in with an array but there's not really a good reason to now this gets into that murky area we briefly talked about at the end of the object section where arrays are objects they technically are objects, which means that we can use a for in with an array. So let's do just a, a simple hard-coded array. For let k for key in this array, how about 88, 99, 77, 66? What do you think k is going to be when I print it out here? What will we see? So for each property in this array, console.log k. Hmm, 0, 1, 2, 3. No matter what values I had in here, if I have four values, the property names are always 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're not looping over the actual elements. The values don't matter. We're looping over the properties. When we have an object, Jeopardy winnings, and I want to access a piece, 
I use a key, a property name, like regular play, and I get a value out. When we have an array, we do the exact same thing, but the keys are numbers. When I look at Jeopardy winnings and I expand it, we have the keys and the values. And if I look at an array and I expand it, we have keys and values. So arrays are just special cases, they're, they're special objects, where the keys are an ordered set of indices, numbers starting at zero. So that's what we're looping over. We're looping over the keys here, which is not all that useful, especially when we already have a for of loop, which automatically gives us the values. The other thing to know about for in is that the order is not necessarily set in stone, and that's another reason it's not great to use with arrays. The way that for in loops can vary from browser to browser, um, on the MDN docs it says it's an arbitrary order. In my experience it's pretty stable most of the time in one browser. It can change when you go to another browser, but also if you are updating or manipulating properties that can change the order as well. Unlike an array where the order is set in stone, the first item is always index 0, the second item is always index 1. So don't use a for in with an array even though you can. It's just kind of a, an odd thing to do. And that about wraps it up for loops. We've seen a ton of different loops. Well, I guess not that many, but we've seen a ton of examples. We started with for loops, then we talked about while loops, and we saw for of. Remember, for of loops are not supported in Internet Explorer at the moment.